Hello, everybody, and welcome to day five, our seven pillars of a woman challenge. We have had an incredible time over the last couple of days talking about, you know, beauty and health and wellness and skincare and motherhood and um, relationship with the Lord and what it's like to live this activated life in Christ. We've talked about marriage. And so today we are going to dive into the nurture her pillar. And this pillar is actually, um, interestingly enough, it's, it's interesting because I think there's a lot of pressure in our society to be an entrepreneur or to be this or do that. And what I love about these seven pillars that I really feel like were deposited in me from the Lord, I feel like these are identities that he's given us, is that you don't have to be any one thing or all things. What, what is it that makes you come alive? You know, that's part of our whole, um, our whole mantra, if you want to use that word. You know, whatever it is that makes you come alive, do it with all your heart. And uh, I believe that in certain circles, there's a, a lack of value put on the artist, on the craftsman, on the, the person who um, feels a particular calling to creating um, art and craftsmanship. And so what I'm really excited about is I'm going to show you guys today in scripture, this particular identity. And, um, and what's really awesome too, is that one of the things we're talking about here in the Her Effect is that you're not limited to any one thing. You don't have to be an entrepreneur or an artist or a mother or an artist or, you know, you don't have to be any one particular thing. Actually, we have women in our amazing ambassadorship in our tribeship within our skincare company. And I, I know for a fact that they are creating some of the most beautiful art and they're building a business. And I just think that's incredible. And so I want to speak to the soul of our artists who maybe have felt like, gosh, am I not valuable enough because I have this desire to create art? <laughs> or um, does what I feel called to, or does what I feel important on the, this earth, not important enough because I, it's art or craftsmanship. And so I want to give you guys major um, kudos and put uh, a heavy amount of value on what you do and who you are, you know, and if you think about the world today, what would our world be without the artist, without art? Um, Nathan and I traveled, uh, I talked about the story in the other pillar, but we traveled to Europe and everywhere you looked, there were, there were um, sculptures and paintings and um, even the buildings were artistic and, and just works of art. And so I just want to call that value out and call forth all of our artists and say, you are worthy and you are amazing and incredible and what you do matters. Okay, guys. So let's dive in. I have an amazing little PowerPoint for you again. <laughs> and, uh, I love doing these PowerPoints. Um, I feel like it really, it really kind of succincts some of these ideas here. So let's go. I'm going to share my screen and dive right in. Okay. So day five. Wow. I'm so, so excited. Okay. Present. All righty. Okay. And I'm what I'm going to do today too. I'm going to go through a lot of scripture um, because to me, as I was searching the scriptures, as I always do when I'm looking for real answers, is the Lord always highlights to me, you know, this journey and this picture and this storyline. And so I was pretty amazed at how many verses in the scripture and how many passages in the Bible talk about the artist and the workman's, you know, the workmanship of a craftsman. And so this is Exodus 35, 31. It says, I have filled him with the spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze. And when I read this, my mind was kind of blown because I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm going to cry again. Every pillar, I think I've cried about something. How good is the Lord that he has filled you? He has filled him with the spirit of God with ability and intelligence. Think about all these things that we think just we do because we're awesome or because, you know, because we just happen to have this thing. But I, I want to remind us that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And he is the one who equips us 
to do the thing that he's called us to do. And he fills us with these gifts from the foundations of the earth. And from the very moment you were conceived, God knew you. He knew every hair on the head, on your head. He knew um, your fingerprints. He knew, and he actually from the throne of God deposited these gifts into you. And it says, I want to re repeat this again, because to me, it just blows my mind. And it it's, um, it's a magnifying, glorifying, praiseworthy attribute of the Lord that he would fill us not only with the spirit of God, but with ability and intelligence and knowledge and craftsmanship to devise artistic designs and to work in gold, silver, and bronze. And then I'm going to go on to some more scriptures here. This is another scripture, Exodus 35, 35. He has filled them with skill to perform every work of an engraver and of a designer and of an embroiderer. So this is a different scripture in blue and in purple and in scarlet material and in fine linen and of a weaver as performers of every work and makers of designs. Oh my goodness. Isn't this amazing? You know, what if we had a world just filled with, you know, people who were just doing business or just, um, you know, uh, only having children and that's all they were going to do on the earth is just reproduce you know um what if we had this earth just one type of person no it's like we need all the gifts we need all the skill sets and all the callings to make this world come alive and i just think this is amazing and beautiful another one second chronicles 2 7 it says now this is amazing because it says now send me a skilled man to work in gold silver, brass, and iron, and in purple, crimson, and violet fabrics. You know, purple was really significant in, in those times because um, it, was very, it was very intricate and a very laborsome process to extract purple um, shades to dye these fabrics and, and, um, and these linens. And it says, and who knows how to make engravings to work with the skilled men whom I have in Judah and Jerusalem, who David, my father provided. And so it's interesting because they're talking, I mean, it says specifically here, man, but what I find fascinating is it's, it's not gender specific, just know that here, but it's like these skilled people to work in all these different capacities artistically are being called out because they, they were needed. And um, as we get along here, Song of Solomon 7.1, how beautiful are your feet in sandals, O prince's daughter. The curves of your hips are like jewels, the work of the hands of an artist. Um, there's value in your art artistry. Exodus 31.6, and behold, I myself have an appointed with him, Ohiliab, the son of Ahasamach, <laughs> of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all who are skillful, I have put skill that they may make all that I have commanded you. Again, God puts that skill in you. He puts that desire. Um, just as I'm saying, don't set aside the dreams and the vision and the purposes and the, and the, the business and the things that you feel called to do. Art and workmanship and craftsmanship has equal value. value. Um, and I just want to keep saying that over and over and over again, because it's so true. Exodus 36, 1, and every skillful person in whom the Lord has put skill and understanding to know how to perform all the work and the construction of the sanctuary shall perform in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. You know, there's a difference between, um, it's like what I do with, with herbs. There's an art and a science to it. And what I find really fascinating is that there were probably men who understood like the structure of things, you know, like here's how we're going to frame the building. Here's how we're going to pour the foundation. But then you had your skilled um, artists who would come into the sanctuary and perform these artistic, you know, touches and finishes. And, you know, Nathan and I went and we saw the, um, uh, man, I, I can't remember it in Italy. <laughs> it's so famous too, uh, drawing a blank here, but every little, um, you know, eyelash on, on the, on the faces of these people that was painted and every little detail. Um, I know I, I grew up in a, in a home where my mom was very artistic and crafts. We were very craft driven as a homeschool family on a farm. You know, we were always looking for ways to create these crafts and it takes a special kind of person 
who has a gift and a skill to, to be attentive and attuned to the details, right? And so let's appreciate those gifts. Second Chronicles 2.10, now behold, I will give to you servants, the woodsmen who cut the tim timber, 20,000 cores of crushed wheat and 20,000 cores of barley and 20,000 baths of wine and 20,000 baths of oil. And when I read this, um, I thought, you know, again, it's look at the diversity of craftsmanship. You've got <laughs> baths of wine and baths of oil. Um, the person who is, when we went to Italy and we, we actually stayed on a farm and went truffle hunting, and then we got to come back to this, it was a 1700 year old um, building home that was built way back in the year, um, oh wait, what, so whatever that was, she's like, oh no, I'm sorry. It was built in the year 1200, so however old that is, and um, there was this giant table in with these beautiful stone, like open windows where you could look out over these vineyards. And so we, it was a, it was a truffle. Um, they went truffle hunting, but they also pressed olive oil. I've talked about their olive oil on some of my lives before in the shed, where we have a seven-day um, health challenge. But we. Um, we were drinking the olive oil and they were pressing grapes and making wine. And those people were artists, right? And what I do here in our skincare company where I, I, I draw from beautiful bounties of the earth and I, and I look for bright, beautiful colors and herbs and flowers. And then we infuse them into our, um, into our skincare. And then I, I'm looking at how can we make this aesthetic and beautiful so that when people receive their packages, it's, it gives them an aromatic experience and a visual experience and a physical beauty, you know, applying it to your skin or nutritionals where you're, you're intaking it in your body. It's like all the boundaries of the earth. How can, um, how can we make things look more beautiful? And so if you have that ability, express it, right? Um, Let's see here. Next one. First Peter 4, 9. Here's an interesting concept too. How many of you as people who love hospitality have thought about that as being an art? First Peter 4, 9 says, be hospitable to one another without complaint. And I looked at that and I thought, you know, hospitality, those who love to serve behind the scenes who are, you know, um, when we've had house church in our home, I, I've really no, noticed the women who are really drawn to hospi hospitality. They're the ladies who, when everyone's talking and, you know, out there in the, the living room talking and having fun, she's back there, you know, washing the dishes or, um, you know, they're the ones that are with me chopping up the food and preparing everything because they, they appreciate hospitality. It's, it's the women who have their doors open and their arms open and say, come, let me nurture you and let me fill you up. That's why I called this the nurture her pillar. I, I was kind of like, is there another word that would describe the artist? But I really consider the artists and the, and the craftsmen nurturers, nurturers. And even what I was talking about with, you know, what I do here in the shop and with our team and skincare, I'm always thinking, how can we nurture the soul with our, our bounties and our, our beautiful works of craftsmanship here? But if you have a hospitality drive, then that is, that is an artistic drive that I think is just absolutely beautiful. Not everybody has that. Um, so here's your challenge for the day, everyone, is I want you to create something that feeds your soul and feeds someone else's soul. Part of art too is um, part of everything we do. When I think about um, how I teach people in business, you know, it's like, and even my sons, when they're thinking about, you know, all of them want to start a business now. And of course I'm like, yeah, let's do it. What kind of problems can you solve? And so when you're thinking about art, I feel like that's like, the problems that you're solving is how can you nurture and fill the soul? When I watch my husband in Italy, um, who was an art teacher, he, my husband is an artist, actually, he's a musician, he's a painter, he loves to blow glass, he throws, um, he does the, the ceramics and the, the pots, and he just loves, that's his, it, it fills him, and I remember him, like, being brought to tears as he would stand in front of some of these paintings that he had been in a classroom teaching his students about and here he was like standing in front of it in all of its glory and it moved him and it filled him up and I I, I think I've never seen him so um, nurtured in that way 
than when he was there and enjoying this art. And so as an artist, the problems that you're solving for the world are you are feeding the soul. And it's something that makes you come alive when you express it. And it should um, be something that that brings people to life or into a, a state of, um, it should give them a state change. Whenever I experience art of any kind, and I look at, you know, art doesn't have to be just a painting or a piece of glass that somebody's blown. There's art in so many different ways and to appreciate it, you know, when you go to a little mom and pop restaurant and the woman who own, we go to a little restaurant in town here and it's actually the husband and wife who own it and they still are the chefs, they cook. And that is their art, you know? And so I'm like, how often, everywhere we go today, if you're not an artist, what I want you to do is begin to look around and start appreciating others' art. If it's not you creating it, then appreciate someone else's art, whether it's the food you're eating when you go out to eat, or if it's a home that's being built, or um, a book that was written. Um, actually, one of my closest friends, I've talked to her about her before. Um, she is a free spirit artist, and the things that make her come alive are so different than, than what makes me come alive. And, and um, it just, to me, it's like, how, how much can we just begin to appreciate those people who are giving their art? Because I think it's often overlooked. So, um, and if you haven't, if you've never thought of yourself as an artist, I would challenge you to maybe start looking within and thinking, oh, this thing that I do when I, um, you know, when I look at homeschool moms who are really, I have friends who are like, I don't want to start a business. I don't want to do anything but raise my children. And I think that is an art in and of itself, you know, raising and nurturing your children in such a way where they're, you know, they make learning fun and they do all these things. And I think, man, that's an art. That's an art too. <laughs> There's so many different things that are art. And um, so I, I love this challenge today. Do something that feeds your soul or appreciate somebody's art that that's your challenge and um let's take a moment here i'm gonna stop the recording and actually before i do that okay we, we do have an editor that's editing these videos but i'd like to just do the call to action is make sure um if you're watching these incredible videos and going through this challenge make sure you join the community and join and listen to the her effect podcast and of course we've got these incredible um you know, I've been wearing t-shirts every day that I love to wear. I, I actually don't really wear other um, articles of clothing anymore, except for my own, because they say something they're, they're It's part of our movement is to embody this. Let's help people rise, run, become, let's activate the earth to um, awaken to life and, and who they were called to be. And so um, we'll see you more on the next pillar.